Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about inflammatory bowel diseases. We will discuss mainly about ulcerative colitis in this video. Going to what is inflammatory bowel disease? Inflammatory bowel disease is a chronic condition of gastrointestinal tract which results from inappropriate mucosal immune activation. And the two disorders in the IBD, they are the Crohn's disease and the ulcerative colitis. We have already discussed the Crohn's disease in the previous video. Do watch that video also because the pathogenesis of the Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis is almost similar and I have discussed that in the previous video. Going to the ulcerative colitis. Now ulcerative colitis, it is a disease of the large intestine mainly and it always involves the rectum and from the rectum the disease extends proximally in a continuous fashion to involve part or all of the colon. When all of the colon is involved, this is known as the pancolitis. However, sometimes when the disease is severe, the small intestine can be involved. Mostly the small intestine in the case of ulcerative colitis is normal. But sometimes in severe disease, uh, there is mild mucosal inflammation of the distal ileum which is known as backwash elitis. It can be present. Now, morphology grossly of ulcerative colitis. There is presence, we already have understood it involves the firstly the rectum and from the rectum the disease extends proximally to involve all of the colon. However, there is no thing as skip lesions. Like in the Crohn's disease, there is presence of skip lesions. There is diffuse involvement of the colon and grossly the colonic mucosa will be red or granular and very characteristic broad based ulcers are seen in ulcerative colitis. In case of Crohn's disease the ulcers were present but they were deep ulcers. Here the ulcers they are not deep they are broad based ulcers. Other feature grossly which is seen is is the presence of pseudopolyps. Now what are pseudopolyps? Here we can see the mucosa is ulcerated. This part is ulcerated mucosa. Okay. So after so much ulceration, there is regeneration of the mucosa. And the part, the isolated islands of regenerating mucosa, like this one, you can see, these, they bulge into the lumen and they form pseudopolyps. Because they are not true polyps, they are known as pseudopolyps. This was the features uh, which are seen in the ulcerative colitis. However, the features like deep fissuring ulceration, there is no strictures, there is no presence of fistulas, there is no sinus formation, no small intestinal involvement, no serocytus. These all features were seen in the Crohn's disease but these are absolutely absent in case of ulcerative colitis. Going to the microscopic features. In the microscopy, firstly, we should remember that ulcerative colitis is very similar to Crohn's disease in some respects. But in some, it is very different. So, some features which are similar to Crohn's disease is the presence of inflammatory infiltrates, there will be presence of crypt abscesses, there will be crypt distortion and epithelial metaplasia can be seen. However, the inflammatory process in case of ulcerative colitis is diffuse and is not transmural is not transmural that means the inflammation here is limited to the mucosa and superficial submucosa to the upper layers however in the case of crohn's disease we understood that the inflammation was transmural it starts from the mucosa and goes up to the serosa now other features here we can see the presence of crypt abscesses. This is a crypt and we can see inside the crypt there are numerous neutrophils present. This is known as crypt abscess. Other features are there is absence or loss of goblet cells. These are the goblet cells which are normally present in the large intestine. However, in the region which is involved there is loss or decrease of the goblet cells. Now, uh, one more feature which was very characteristic of Crohn's disease was the granulomas. However, the granulomas, they are absent in case of ulcerative colitis. 
the pseudo polyps we have, we can see this is the ulcerated part and here the mucosa is regenerating so it forms a polyp like structure and this is known as the pseudo polyps they can also be seen on the microscopic investigations now the diagnosis for diagnosis of ulcerative colitis the features which are used are firstly the disease is limited to the colon it is not extending up to the small intestine uh, mostly there is rectal involvement and from which it goes proximally then there is absence of skip lesions absence of deep ulcers absence of transmural sinus tracts transmural inflammation and there is absence of granulomas this all features will provide us with the diagnosis of ulcerative colitis going to the clinical features now ulcerative colitis is a relapsing disorder the symptoms mainly seen are like there, there are attacks of bloody diarrhea with the stringy mucoid material coming there will be lower abdominal pain cramps and they will be temporarily relieved by defecation but these symptoms they persist for days weeks or months and then they subside and then the second episode follows after a few years um, uh, the years can vary from person to person more than half of the person mostly have a relapse within 10 year of period and out of them also around 30 percent will require colectomy within three years after the presentation rest are managed by the immunosuppressants or the steroids going to the factors which trigger the ulcerative colitis first very important factor is the psychological stress and sometimes in some patients smoking cessation can also trigger the ulcerative colitis we have already discussed in the Crohn's disease that the smoking was a triggering factor however in ulcerative colitis paradoxically smoking cessation causes uh, triggers the ulcerative colitis now going to lastly very important part is the difference between the Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis now we know that a Crohn's disease uh, the part involved of the bowel is the ileum or colon plus minus the colon however it can involve all of the GI tract however in the case of ulcerative colitis only colon is involved distribution is diffuse in case of ulcerative colitis however skip lesions are present in case of Crohn's disease now stricture is seen in case of Crohn's disease it is not seen in the case of ulcerative colitis the wall is thick because of the fibrosis the edema the transmural involvement it is thinned out in case of ulcerative colitis going to the microscopic uh, picture inflammation is transmural here it is limited to the superficial layer then pseudo polyps are very less present in case of Crohn's disease however they are marked in case of ulcerative colitis the ulcers are deep here they are superficial now lymphoid reaction the granulomas the fibrosis the serocytes and the fistula these all are present in case of uh, Crohn's disease however they are very less in case of the ulcerative colitis going to the clinical features and complications the uh, fistulas the fat and vitamin malabsorption they are present in case of Crohn's disease however they are absent here here mostly the fluid and electrolyte imbalances can be seen and malignant potential very important part malignant potential the ulcerative colitis have a malignant potential however Crohn's disease has a malignant potential mostly when the colon is involved now the recurrence after surgery is common in case of Crohn's disease we are not going much into the treatment part however it is less in the case of ulcerative colitis these were all the differences between the Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis they are very important to know if you like this video do like share and subscribe to this channel thanks for watching this video